I'm Jakira Black and this is a video about didactism which is a very very hard word for me to say but we all as authors need to be aware what messages we are portraying and communicating to our readers because most books are didactic whether it is something that you actually deliberately put into your plot or it is just a matter that the way you write is the way you write because we all have morals and we all have thoughts and ideas and they just naturally appear in our writing that's just the way it is but the thing is you know we have a responsibility to make sure that we're not portraying messages that are nece aren't necessarily brilliant but also we have to make sure that those messages don't overpower our stories but actually um, just enhance our stories so uh, what I decided to do because I've been wanting to talk about statism because it is one of my favorite issues of, um, with writing um, I did about it when I did children's literature with the Open University and really really liked it um, I got my highest ever mark with Open University from writing an essay about didactism in Monster of Men by Patrick Ness so it is a bit of a favourite for me but the thing is um, I've decided that the best way to communicate that would be to talk about fairy tales because obviously fairy tales tend to be moral stories they communicate a message and I'm going to talk about um, I, to be quite honest what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blurb um, because I want to get this video done but you know fairy tales communicate a message so like for instance Red Riding Hood communicates stay on the path you have to stay on the path don't leave the path do not leave the path if you leave the path you will get in danger now the thing is if someone said that to you you'd be like mm, whatever yeah right if you had a story with just that and no excitement and no vibrancy in it then who would read it you know oh, we've got to stay on the path talking about a path and walking along a path and it's very exciting on this path that never changes and nothing ever changes and but when red riding hood steps off the path and comes across the wolf and gets to granny's and the wolf is there and everything that happens you know we see what happens if you step off the path because if you step off the path then you are in danger so the simple truth is red riding hood uses the techniques of storytelling to communicate this didactic message which you know is a brilliant message because obviously we all do things that aren't particularly wise and um you know we all step off the path and we all suffer um issues because of stepping off the path and the lesson to learn is do not step off the path if there is a reason why you should not step off the path you don't step off the path but like i said if it's just a message communicate you to you don't step off the path it's like well yeah right whatever but if you've got a story and you're enjoying the story and subconsciously that message is coming into your head then that's a lot lot more interesting you know and whether or not you decide that you're going to step off the path anyway and forget the story moral and just enjoy the story then that's up to whoever's reading the story but another one for instance is Rapunzel Rapunzel is a story about obviously this girl trapped in a tower and there's this woman who um, has kidnapped her but she doesn't know she thinks that the woman is her mother but um, that communicates a message of in the darkest moments there is always hope but if I just say to you in the darkest moments there's always hope well, for a start, there's only a few words in that. 
doesn't communicate anything because you've got no story there. You've got nothing to actually glue it into your brain. But the story of Rapunzel, actually reading the story and thinking about this girl trapped there and in the end everything becomes right because she escapes this woman and she gets to go back to her parents and you know even though she's suffered you know it's not so bad I've got an itchy nose <laughs> um so you know that's another example of a didactic message but it's told in a way that is exciting and you know is a story that we obviously all know another message in a story is the boy who cried wolf and the boy who cried wolf is basically it's I thought it wasn't recording then I did that last a few weeks ago um the boy who cried wolf is obviously if you say something is happening and it's not happening just to get people to come out whatever then eventually they're not going to believe you. So if you tell people lies all the time, then they're not going to believe you. But if you just say to people, well, if you tell lies all the time, then eventually they're not going to forget, going to believe you. Then it's going to go in one ear and out the other. But you've got this story that communicates that message, but it it isn't. But this story is the thing that's important, and the message is just a subconscious thing that's a byproduct of the story um I and mean, let's think of another one i was actually thinking of some earlier and i can't actually remember what they were now and i wrote them down but they're on my computer which isn't even open um cinderella what's the message of cinderella that oh i know my friend angela said that if you work hard and are good and keep trying then eventually everything will turn out for the good and that's the message of Cinderella that in the end she was okay because she was a good person and the prince could see she was a good person and she was hard working and she didn't give up she kept on hoping she kept hoping that life would change and that she would be okay and she trusted the fairy godmother and you know to help her and you know that's a message about you know about hope and faith and you know that you just have to trust that everything is going to be okay and you know just work hard and do your best but obviously again if I just said that to you then it goes in one ear and out the other like the other messages, but told in the form of this story of Cinderella going to the ball and meeting the prince and, you know, it's it's a message that becomes part of our psyche, really. You know, this is a message that we know from growing up, you know. And the thing is, there's other things as well. I mean, even talking about stories that aren't fairy tales, like I mentioned, Monster of Men by Patrick Nessa at the beginning, you know, and that story, um, what I wrote about was about how it was about child agency and about how um, it was about survival of the fittest and, and how these two things work together that, you know, you had this group of people um, surviving and, and, and controlling another group of people, but in the end, the children you know and people took control you know and that's a message but the thing is if I just said to you well survival of the fittest and but eventually someone's going to sort it all out then it's like well yeah okay whatever but reading the actual story it's exciting it's like it gets you thinking and it gets you wondering about it and it continually goes through your head and swirls around and, you know, this message and you're thinking about it and what it means and, and that's what didactism is. You know, and like I said right at the beginning, whether we purposely communicate that message or it is because it is part of our, who we are, you know, there is usually a message in every story. I don't, I think pretty much that it's pretty impossible 
for a book or a story to not have some message in, I think that they're probably all didactic um, to some level. And if you, and you know, when you're watching this, if you can think of a story that's not didactic, then comment down below. Um, but I cannot think of anything that's not didactic. I can't. Because in one way or another, they are all teaching us a message. And what it what one sto what a story teaches one person might not be what it teaches another person, but it's still didactic because that's what stories are like. And we, as authors, have to be careful and have to um, be careful what messages we're communicating. Like I said, but also have to make sure that our story is more important than the message because. If that is a message that you want to communicate, then you want your reader to understand it by experiencing it and not just be told. It's the whole thing about show, don't tell. It's exactly that. It's show, don't tell. If you tell the message, if you show it in your story, then it's longer lasting. It, it means something. So, yeah. So, if you've enjoyed this video today, if you've learnt something, um, then subscribe to my channel because I am going to be doing more um, writing tips. Um, I actually have been planning to do this didactism one and it's actually stopped me doing other things, but now I've done it, then I can go on and do um, other tips. So, if there's any writing tips that you, you know... Um, anything that you'd like to talk about uh, me to talk about um, for instance dialogue or you know anything really then comment that below as well but subscribe subscribe because I want more subscribers um, so yeah okay bye